Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the presentation of applications of data science and AI for startups and entrepreneurs. And we're also going to cover how entrepreneurs should think about AI. And in the first part of the presentation, uh, I want to cover the basics of how data science is being used <clears throat> within a business setting. Okay. Uh, and this holds for any type of organization, whether we're talking about this, a small, medium, or large enterprise. So in practice, there are countless use cases. Uh, however, uh, in reality, we can break them down into three parts, right? So if you want to go down the rabbit hole of use cases, you're going to find recommender systems, forecasting, chatbots, computer vision, you name it. Uh, however, within a business context, in most cases, let's say 90% of the cases, we talk about descriptive applications, predictive or prescriptive, okay? So descriptive applications are probably the most vanilla ones and the least exciting, okay? So descriptive applications of data science and AI uh, are dashboards, Excel, basic descriptive statistics. So these are the kind of things that were considered sexy within the organizational setting, but also within the innovation space 10, 15 years ago. So this was when the big data revolution was a thing and we had some companies uh, reach very high valuations like Tableau. Uh, so now it looks like Power BI is dominating this space and there's probably very little room for startups in this area. Um, I guess the majority of applications in this type of setting are within an organization and within a business analytics function, right? So I presume most people are familiar with this. I'm not going to expand upon this anymore. With regards to predictive applications of data science, uh, I still think this is where most of the applications are. So uh, by the term predictive applications, I'm referring to a setting where you want to use an algorithm in order to automate a particular process. And obviously this means that you can either then remove humans from the process or you can improve the performance of that process. So for example, if you have, let's say, I don't know, uh, humans uh, making certain decisions, like a, a good example might be, you know, some form of trading, you can create a, uh, let's say, decision support system, which um, helps maybe reduce the number of analysts you need and also improves the performance of, of uh, the investment performance. Um, and some of the, I mean, most of the applications of data science fall within this scope, things like forecasting, customer churn prediction, fraud detection, predictive maintenance, healthcare. Uh, there are many, many companies now in the space of predictive healthcare. It's a space that is like growing very um, rapidly. And um, things like credit scoring, recommender systems, et cetera. One of the most popular business models uh, for AI startups has been to focus on this type of narrow AI, narrow machine learning, and then to focus on generating one solution uh, which uh, for a particular industry, let's say forecasting sales and retail, and then package it and then sell it, right? So it's not, uh, usually it's not the type of business model that can generate a unicorn, but it's quite effective. And many businesses have followed this track quite often moving from services all the way to, to products and then trying to go for a small exit, five to 10 million with these types of niche products. That being said, there are also many organizations that prefer to do these things internally through the development of their own data science and AI team. And then we have prescriptive data science and prescriptive, prescriptive analytics. So this refers to an application of data science where uh, the goal is to completely automate the process. So instead, for example, of uh, assisting the decision-making process of investment managers, uh, you just provide, you create an algorithm to trade essentially. And this is a very popular type of scenario for obviously trading, supply chain, energy management, uh, portfolio optimization, uh, dynamic pricing in retail, things like that. Uh, that being said, um, this is obviously the most challenging, let's say, type of problem within the space of data science and AI. I mean, obviously, it's not a trivial problem, right? So, and not every organization is willing to provide this kind of control to an algorithm or an AI. Uh, however, uh, it's obviously a very, let's say, uh, important type of application, a very type important of, of let's say, a use case in the sense that full-blown automation 
can save resources and can increase margins. But obviously not every organization aspires to do that. And there are opportunities here, both for startups, but also for organizations that wanna do these things internally. And then we have uh, what is like AI, but let's say the current form of AI, which is mostly focused on LLMs and, and agents. And uh, this type of AI that we currently have is mostly going to be used around automations of processes and operations, plus media and content creation. So media content creation, I don't want to expand too much upon it because I think it's the uh, obvious answer. Uh, nevertheless, I think there are many, uh, you know, there are going to be many companies there, but it's going to be a bit of a red ocean. With regards to business process automation and things like market research, administrative assistance, we're going to see a lot of work taking place in that um, in that area. Now, is everything going to happen through ChatGPT? We don't know. I'm not sure whether we're going to see mostly service providers that provide this service for companies and they're using tools like uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT, or something similar or whether we're going to see entirely new businesses. Uh, obviously, everyone has their own opinion around that. Uh, but I do believe we're going to see a lot of products and services in this area. Probably, however, it's not a very good idea for a business, simply because it's going to be a red ocean, a very competitive space. And, and in the near future, we're definitely going to see a lot of developments in things like business process automation, app creation, no-code platforms for that use AI, um, auto-GPT, uh, things like that. And... AutoGPT is like a very interesting development. Uh, it's essentially a materialization of Marvin Minsky's Society of Mind. Marvin Minsky was one of the pioneers of, of AI decades ago, a, a true visionary and a genius in this space. And he envisioned that a real uh, AI that has uh, general intelligence capabilities would have these different modules specialized in different functions which are interconnected. And this is what AutoGPT is doing. There's a project which is open source, I believe, even if it's on Microsoft's GitHub, uh, Jarvis, where you can request for this agent to do something. And then, you know, it plugs in into these different modules as like, oh, here's a module that's text to speech and another one to, I don't know, uh, generate more text and another one to generate images. So then it blends everything together. Uh, so you can understand how this is going to eventually assist with the creation of uh, the one-man, um, let's say, entrepreneur uh, startup, um, which is something that has been discussed a lot uh, recently. Again, probably not a very good idea for a startup itself, but a very good development for entrepreneurs in the sense that, if, for example, you are thinking of creating a new business and that business is maybe very marketing heavy, maybe sales heavy, this type of technology can definitely help alleviate some of that pressure of your shoulders. So what CEOs need to know, and this by CEOs, I refer to CEOs of businesses that are a bit more established as well as mid-level managers. Um, LLMs will enable a simple form of general AI, which enable the automation of many tasks. And we already discussed content creation, but this will involve any kind of form of text processing. But it looks like also ChatGPT now has data analysis capabilities, so it can even do things like produce graphs for you, etc. To a large extent, LLMs are just a better user interface because they allow us to interface with technology using language. And this is really where the power is. And in terms of the transformational impact of this technology, it's going to be mostly around the fact that most businesses will require fewer employees and they'll be able to produce faster and more output. And we're going to witness the disruption and the destruction of many industries, as you're all aware. Now, with regards to the opportunities that exist for AI uh, for, sorry, for startups to use AI, uh, you have to be a bit more careful, right? So first of all, uh, it's probably a good idea to narrow down your focus. AI is moving fast. And as you've seen, uh, like even with the recent events unfolding with Sam Altman being fired from OpenAI and then joining Microsoft a few days later, everything is becoming faster and faster, right? So in terms of technology and business, what used to take months, now it's taking days, okay? So what is very important for startups and entrepreneurs is to make sure that you establish a niche in an area that makes it difficult for others to compete in that niche. And this is most likely not going to be around technology. It might be around a business niche or a geographical niche. It's very important to avoid the obvious. So many niches will become overcrowded. A very good example is generic AI writers that 
uh, generic AI writers used to be a very good model before ChatGPT, but now ChatGPT has eliminated the need for this type of business model. Okay, and obviously all these companies are going to disappear, or most of them. Another very good example comes from recent history, and that is text to voice. So text to voice is a very useful technology. It was never as popular or groundbreaking as ChatGPT, but there was a point where there were uh, researchers actively researching different text to voice algorithms and different services for that kind of thing. So now this is a service that has been commoditized, right? So this is what's going to happen, for example, with content writing. And it essentially resembles perfect competition. So with regards to text to voice, there's no real opportunity to sell this kind of service, but you can package it in something else. Like for example, Synthesia is a very interesting company because they've packaged text to voice and other technologies to create these types of synthetic avatars, which read out content. So this type of synthesis and combination of different elements and different APIs, it might be one way for you to create, to find the right niche for your business. Okay, and here are some other hints that uh, you know that, that is good to take into account. For example, you can take what you're already doing and try to do it faster using AI. So maybe you don't really want to be an AI startup, but you already have some operations in place and you just want to use AI to become more efficient. Again, sales and marketing being a very good example of that. The same, this also, another approach to this is to, to replace humans with AI, I guess this two kind of go hand in hand. Um, and also, you know, another opportunity exists in the automation of what might be boring applications, which are very useful, like automating customer support. Some of the main case studies in this area come from that area, like automating customer support. Many applications in practice will still be based around traditional machine learning. Some of the areas we saw earlier on the in the section around predictive analytics. So things like demand forecasting, personalized uh, in marketing, recommender systems, and so on and so forth. The thing with these types of applications is that the boom in AI has made these types of conversations easier. So it's become easier than ever to speak about these kind of things within, um, you know, within your organization. And I think this is, is very, very important because you can sell some kind of narrow machine, narrow AI, some kind of machine learning application, and you don't really need to sell general AI, uh, artificial general intelligence. And now I think there's a very nice sweet spot in the market, and it's going to be there for the next two or three years or so, where selling these types of services is going to become easier and easier. So how can you integrate AI into your startup? Um, so one way to do it is to identify whether you need AI, broad AI or narrow AI, identify whether there is an API for that. If there is an API for that, then it might be good to consider it, but obviously you have to decide on the pros and cons of using your own solution, open source solution versus using commoditized solution. Um, as we progress, open source is becoming more and more accessible and more and easier and easier to use. So that's something that will require some consideration. And then you obviously need to understand the KPIs, the cost of implementation, and how to use this information to raise money. Sometimes startups make mistakes around this part. So maybe they're like, oh, we're going to develop our own solution and it's just too expensive. Sometimes they make a mistake around the KPI. They're not clear as to how AI will either help their own internal KPIs or the, or the client's APIs. And obviously this affects how they position themselves when they try to raise money from an investor. When you want to build an AI competency, there are a few ways to do it. One of the ways to do it is to be the first in your own sector. Okay, So I think that some companies, uh, they do have a first mover advantage in this area, and it still matters a lot. The reason being that in order to carve your own niche, uh, the barriers to entry in this type of space are going to be low. It might really come down to the fact that you want to acquire a significant number of users in an area, so you lock them in, and they will not be willing to switch to a different provider. I think it's probably going to be very difficult to have some kind of advantage in terms of the technology when the technology is advancing so rapidly and is being commoditized. Another advantage might be to use your own model, which is a good idea under certain circumstances, not under any circumstance. You need to be very clear as to what the costs and the benefits are of such a solution. Uh, then to use AI in a specialized niche, okay, I think we already covered this. And then finally, developing a new model is probably a bad idea unless, unless you have a very clear picture of what you're trying to achieve 
when you're also an expert in this area. Okay, so that's like a very, a, a very special, a different type of use case. So with regards to security funds and partnerships, uh, I think that as a startup, you shouldn't obviously use your own funds most of the time. You need uh, to use the AI edge to raise more money at the better valuation. So I think that there is a lot of FOMO now around AI, and it's a very good opportunity to position your business in the right way to demonstrate how AI is going to help the business's valuation. And obviously, this is going to make investor conversations much, much easier. So if you say, hey, Mr. Investor, we need half a million to develop a solution for this. This is how it affects our internal KPIs and our clients' KPIs. You should be able to see 5x over the next round and 100x over the long run. Okay, And this is how you should really position it. The AI market is still experiencing some kind of FOMO. And we're going to see this type of FOMO go up and down over the next few years as there are new technologies being developed and a new versions of, of ChatGPT, new versions of LLMs, and new and more powerful GPUs. Investing in AI is always going, I mean, not always, but it's going to return a very good multiple over the next few years if properly executed, okay? If you do have a strategy and you do know how to execute it. And this is how really you should position yourselves in the eyes of the investors, that we need this money and we're gonna turn it 10x in a few years. Because that's the reality with AI, you can actually do that. You can actually do this now while the majority of businesses are not AI-driven. This opportunity will not be there in five years from now, okay? So uh, another very important of raising funds is that you need to have some kind of data strategy in place and an AI strategy. So you need to have clarity on vision, resources, timelines, and ROI. And investors will care a lot about all of these points, especially the return on, on investment. So in terms of how you can measure the AI impact and the return on investment, um, there are a few ways to do it. I mean, there are different metrics that different companies go by, and here are some of them. So you can focus on cost savings, revenue increase, productivity improvement, quality improvement, risk reduction, innovation, customer experience, and competitive advantage. So all of these play a role into AI and how you position your, your unique technology. I believe the first few cost savings, revenue increase, and productivity improvement, they're probably easier to communicate. They're easier also to, to sell in a way. Um, others like risk reduction, innovation, quality improvement, maybe they're a bit more subjective, the more domain specific. But in one, in one way or another, having at least one of them is going to help you pitch your startup in a more effective way. In terms of the tools that you can use in order to start and embark on your AI journey, um, there are obviously many out there, uh, ChatGPT being the obvious one, and obviously all the big cloud providers. Um, it's just in terms of open source, I wanted to make a special mention to Hugging Face, a long chain. Those of you who have a technical background are obviously aware of this, but those of you who come from different backgrounds, maybe you've never heard of them. So Hugging Face, is an open source repository of LLMs and transformer models, including also stable diffusion models. And it's the way to go if you want to develop your own open source solution. Langchain is a library which allows you to combine different LLMs together to create your own chatbots and agents. So very, very powerful libraries, very, very powerful products. If you're considering open source, make sure to take a look at them. And frankly, you can do quite a lot of things by using, um, like by investing a small amount of money in things like using Hugging Face or Google Colab. I'm not saying you should take this to production level, but you know, if you're an, an entrepreneur and you work under a lean mindset, you can definitely do a lot with these types of with these types of tools. And obviously, if you want more advice on that, because there, are, you know, the, the number of platforms and tools is increasing every single day, day by day more than happy to provide some advice. Just make sure to shoot me a message. So that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you soon. Thank you.